that's the reason why you have to assess and evaluate each and every report that's given to you related to voter fraud. Because the one that you choose not to track down may be the one that they introduce next time to take advantage of. And you can't allow that to happen. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. My next guest is somebody who has been on the show several times, but maybe this is his most important interview he's done since he's been coming on the show. And it's just because of the circumstances surrounding everything. It is our own Secretary of State right here from the state of Alabama, the Secretary John Merrill. Welcome into the program. Thank you, Caleb. Always good to be with you. Yeah, and I got to tell you, you may be one of the few people that has had a more hectic three uh, past three days than I have. Well, you know, that's just part of it, my brother. All right, so now I, I do, of course, want to, and I think the audience wants to hear about all of the craziness going on with varied elections in different states around the country when it comes to the Electoral College, and that is important. We are going to get to that. But before we get to that, how did election night go right here in the Yellowhammer State? Oh, it went extraordinarily well. I don't know that it could have been any better. Of course, we broke every record in the history of the state for voter participation. 2.3 million Alabamians going to the polls, casting their ballot for the candidate of their choice. Um, we had just an unbelievable experience in all 1,980 polling sites in the state introduction of the new electronic poll books in 63 of the 67 counties, reducing the wait time dramatically. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a, an exceptional, exceptional day. And when you talk about decreasing the wait time, that was something that was desperately needed this year because uh, I had so many people, friends, neighbors, that actually told me they had to wait in line for a significant amount of time. I was like, I don't know what y'all were talking about because I went in five minutes is because I voted in the afternoon after most people already had <laughs> Uh, but but they said that there was just a massive turnout, there were lines out the door, and so decreasing that wait time probably really, really helped things out. Well, it did, and in some areas where we had wait times introduced, it was because of either poor administration and the use of the electronic poll book, mm -hmm. or it was also related to the facility that was being used as the polling site. So those are things that always have to be reviewed each and every election cycle. And then changes have to be made depending on what has occurred at that particular cycle and what's anticipated for the future. You know, I think that that's a perfect segue into one of the main points that I want to make here and, and ask about. John, we are looking at this and seeing places like Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania just take forever to get election results in. And you've got states like Alabama that seemed to do it right away. Now, I know Alabama is a little bit different because we tended to vote overwhelmingly in one direction, and so it's not a tight race, which obviously helps decrease the time that it takes for people to call. But I'm looking at places like Florida, which still had a fairly close race. It's the third largest state in the country. It's by far the most expensive swing state, and they reported and, and their vote was called at about midnight. So what's going right. on in these other states? Why, why can they not get the results out quicker? And, Caleb, it should have been reported earlier in Florida. As a matter of fact, Governor DeSantis said on TV they thought they should have reported at about 8.15. Uh, I, I have not talked to Governor DeSantis, but I did talk to uh, Secretary Lee yesterday, and she told me that things went so smoothly. Uh, it's like nothing happened out of the ordinary. I mean, mm. that they could have called it earlier, earlier in the evening. And again, like you said, Florida is the third most populous state in the union. So with that being the case, I just think that um, it's time for some of these states to address the way that they're doing things because there are concerns and problems that have been introduced because of the way that they've chosen to administer their election. And some of those things have been done this year for the first time in the history of those states. Mm -hmm. Those those are concerns and problems that we have because people have changed their rules. They've changed their guidelines. They've done it through administrative rule. They've done it through directives as opposed to going through the legislative process. That's never good. 
because whenever those things happen, it puts people in a defensive posture and they wonder if things are being done with nefarious intent. Right, especially when you see something in a very contentious election year where it comes down to the wire and then all of a sudden people can't seem to get their act together. That does, whether for, for good or for ill, it does raise questions about whether or not there is some kind of nefarious thing going on in the background that, that people can't see. And that actually is why I wanted to ask about this. There's a lot of information floating around there. Good information, bad information, and I've seen a lot of conspiracy theories going out that are 100%. I mean, you, you can tell just by doing five seconds of research, they're a complete hoax. But then I've also seen some that seem fairly credible. So if you could help us kind of sort through the weeds here, uh, could you mention maybe some of the ones that there's no truth to and some of the ones that it may merit some further investigation? Well, a couple of things that have been brought to my attention on a regular basis since Tuesday. One of them talks about watermarks that are placed on the ballot. So people are able to tell who voted for whom and which ballots to discard, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's all just a lie. It really reminds me of the Doug Jones, Roy Moore campaign in 2017 because people would make things up and then they'd publicize them on the internet, either through Facebook, Twitter, uh, other mm -hmm. social media platforms. The watermark conversation is one of those things. ES&S, which is a company called uh, Election Systems and Software, is based in Omaha, Nebraska. And ES&S is our election systems provider. Now, ES&S actually has... Uh, the contract for several states around us. So they have a printing facility up in Hoover where they make ballots for five or six states. And we're one of those states, but their headquarters are in Alabama. Hmm. And there is no conversation with them about watermarks or anything like that. That's all made up. I mean, it's fabricated, just created for social media purposes. Another thing that I've seen floating around is a couple of ladies that were interviewed, allegedly interviewed, at an alleged polling site in Arizona that were told they had to use Sharpies to vote. Right. That they had to put their mark on the ballot with a Sharpie as opposed to a pen. And then not able to go back and, and correct that. Now, I never heard them say that their ballot was rejected and that their ballot did not count just that it was a problem because it fled through. Mm -hmm. if, if you have that situation occur, when you place your ballot in the tabulator, the tabulator will reject your ballot, which means it will spit it back out, and your vote will not count. Now, in voting, it's not like the lottery. You don't go and you don't buy your ticket, and then if you didn't win, you're done. When you put your ballot in the machine, if it didn't accept it, they don't say, sorry, your vote doesn't count. See you next time. Mm -hmm. They say, we're sorry. There was a problem with your ballot. It has been spoiled. We're going to need to give you another ballot. You're going to need to remark it. And then at that point, you would remark it, and then you would submit it, and then it would count for the candidate of your choice if there was a problem. Mm -hmm. If there's no problem, you're going to see the number increase from number 118 to number 119 or number 3,812 to number 3,813. But you can see that yourself when you put the ballot in the machine. So these people that are saying these people were denied the right to vote, that's a lie. That didn't happen. So I, I don't know what happened, but I know that didn't happen the way that it's being presented. Okay. So are there any out there that are being credible? For example, the, the 4 a.m. and the 6 a.m. ballot dump that took place in Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, it, it was bizarre. Now, this state is, of course, not in contention, and it went for Vice President Biden. But one thing that I thought was really, really odd is that in the state of Virginia, they had been counting votes, and then all of a sudden at like 11 at night just decided to stop which seemed very strange. Uh, is there well, anything to worry about Georgia. there? Or? Yeah, they did that yeah. in Georgia too. And that, that was a problem. And I don't know why they did it the way that they did it, because in doing it that way, it creates confusion. And people mm -hmm. believe that there's going to be some nefarious activities ongoing. And, and they're not going to be confident that what happened was, was done with accountability and transparency. And that creates confusion for everyone 
ever won. Okay, so so let's talk about the ballot dump by Nate Silver. He posted this at 538, and uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing you've at least heard about this story that uh, I think in Wisconsin it was 4 a.m. and in Michigan it was 6 a.m. You, you, it might be reversed. But anyway, uh, you, you see the normal trajectory of the election that votes start coming in. Donald Trump starts early on pulling ahead, and then he gets to the point to where he's got a sizable lead on Biden. And then all of a sudden, there is a straight up and down line that just goes straight up on votes for Biden. And none of those votes happen to go for Trump. None of them went for a third party candidate. There was no error or rejected ballots. You just see a massive ballot dump all in Biden's favor. Is there yeah, anything to be concerned have, about there? Yeah, I can't understand that at all. That does not make sense. That does not make sense mathematically, because there would be at least one person that would have voted for the president. And to think that all those ballots could have been submitted in a legal form and all of them support Vice President Biden, that doesn't make any sense. So I don't know what the election observers did, but I do know this. Each one of those states and each one of those polling sites should have had election watchers Mm. who were on standby, provided by the Democratic Party and the Republican Party to witness what was ongoing. And if they saw something occur that raised an issue, a concern for them, then they should have addressed it. They should have reported it instead of us just witnessing the numbers increase or decrease on TV. Are you following me? I am. Yeah, and so that goes back to the state Republican Party and the state Democratic Party on being prepared or not being prepared to make sure that the witnessing occurs. One thing that made me a little suspicious about that, too, is in those particular ballots, you saw a dramatic and immediate increase for Vice President Biden, but you didn't see the same thing for Democrats across the board in those states. For example, if you're looking down ballot, there was a very close Senate race between a Republican and a Democrat senator, and the totals remained the same after that ballot dump took place, which means that out of those votes, it didn't seem like anyone or at least not a significant number of those people voted at all down ballot. They just specifically voted for Biden, left the entire rest of their ballot blank, which also well, tends to and be And there's going to be, yeah, and there's going to be some undervotes in any race. There's right. no doubt about that, but not to the point that you're raising where, it was more than 100,000. That's mm-hmm. just not, it's not even, you can't even contemplate that. So my question is, what can some of these states do in the future to make sure that something like this doesn't happen, that we can report earlier? Because I think it's, it's long been, and I know that this is not the norm for other countries, but it's long been something that's been very good about America is that we tend to know the results of an election pretty close to when we actually vote. We do, and Caleb, one of the things that has to take place, and I issued an editorial about this this morning, we have to make sure that all of these states in the union, and and look, there's something we need to talk about for just a second. We don't have a national election, and we shouldn't even talk about there being a national election because there's not a national election. We have 50 state elections, Mm -hmm. And in those 50 state elections, we elect someone for national office. Right. That's what we do. What we have to make sure of is that those states are consistent in administration of their election every election cycle. Mm -hmm. So all an example for Alabama, all 67 counties should be doing things the same way in Florida, all 67 counties should be doing things the same way. In Pennsylvania, all 67 counties should be doing things the same way. In California, all 67 counties should be doing things the same way. The the state should be consistent in the administrative aspects of the election, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on. You should not have uh, 23 uh, uh, 23 counties in California doing it one way Mm -hmm. and 44 counties doing it another way. That's not acceptable. And we have some of that going on right now. Right. And and I know that you're not this way and I'm not this way either. I, I don't want there to be a national standardized federal election system to where every state does everything the same way. But states should be internally consistent because it is a state election. 
you are correct, my friend. One thing that I wanted to ask about, too, because this is another story that I saw that kind of set off my spidey senses, and I don't know if anything weird happened here, but it's enough to raise suspicion and, and merits further investigation. Uh, there was a county in Michigan. It's a rural county, and back in 2016, it went 30 points in Trump's direction. This time, it went tw 29 points in Biden's direction. That seems highly, highly suspect that in four years, it completely changed the demographics of the county. What, what, what's your reaction to that? No, that's crazy right there. You would not think that that could have been either A, reported correctly or B, recorded correctly. Mm -hmm. Because when you see a dramatic change like that, that means the, the number of people and the people that participated in the process were completely different than they were before. Right. I mean, it's almost like they transplanted a bunch of people from Portland, Oregon, right into this rural county in Michigan within the span of four years. And that just seems very, very suspicious to me. That's right. Absolutely. All right. So we've talked a lot about some of the stories that have been floating around. Is there anything else that the voters need to know about this process? When, when do you expect that we will have an answer? Well, I think over the weekend, you're going to see uh, some confirmations occur. And of course, in Georgia now, uh, it was interesting. Secretary Lee and I were talking last night, as I mentioned to you, she's the secretary from Florida. Right. And she asked me, she said, what do you think is about to happen in, in Georgia? And I said, well, with what's occurring now, you're going to see uh, the president lose the state. And, and the, at the time, he was still ahead by like seven or 8,000 votes. Right. He I just said, inched ahead uh, yeah. not too long ago. So, yeah. And I said, you're going to see Vice President Biden win the, win the state by like three, uh, two to three thousand votes. I said, that's what's going to happen there. And of course, they have an automatic recount if it's within a certain percentage of separation. And that's what you're about to have. So that's a concern that needs to be meted because. There's a lot of people who believe that Georgia was stolen from the president. Well, Mr. Secretary, I have to say, because I was talking to some friends about this, uh, when it comes to these, at least the appearance of something that could be fraudulent, something that could be wrong, I was explaining to them, because they're like, do we have to really chase down every single rabbit that pops out of this? I was like, actually, yes. And the reason is because... Let's say that we do an investigation, turns out everything was above board, that it wouldn't have changed the outcome of the election. It's still important that we look into it because if there is a hole, if there's a hole in the wall of the fortress, all of a sudden people are going to see that and go, hmm, that might be a good place that we could exploit next time because they didn't look into it this time. You are dead on with that comment. That's the reason why you have to assess and evaluate each and every report that's given to you related to voter fraud because the one that you choose not to track down may be the one that they introduce next time to take advantage of and you can't allow that to happen well absolutely uh before we let you go here and i do appreciate you uh, uh taking time to to talk to the voters of alabama and and really around the country to try to help us understand exactly what's going on here uh, is there anything else that we need to know that we need to be prepared for in the coming days? No, nothing I can think of related to our state. Mm -hmm. I think other types of information will continue to be introduced uh, related to the administration of the election. It's a concern about other states not being consistent in the administration of their election. And we have to continue to force the Congress to look at this but we do not want federal overreach from the Congress in this area. Sure. So that, that's very important to remember, too. So I guess my, my last question then here is, what's next? What happens? Does the president wind up fighting this in the courts? Do we, you know, is it it's sort of a Bush v. Gore situation to where we may not know who the president is for several weeks on end? Uh, d does this come out in Biden's favor? Does it come out in Trump's favor? What are you predicting happens? Well, I think it's going to be extraordinarily hard for the president to be successful, but I would not be surprised if uh, there was a court challenge. But you've got to have empirical data to back up your position if sure. you file a suit in court. Well, I think that that's 100 percent fair. And as much as I do want President Trump to win, I, I want him to remain the president, obviously. 
what's most important is whoever actually did win the election is the one that is in office. As, as much as I would like for Trump to win, I go where the data goes. That's right, and that's what we have to do. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Secretary. I know that you're extremely busy right now. You're, you're even riding around in your car as we speak, but we certainly appreciate you taking the time to, to speak to the, the audience here. Thank you, Caleb. You take care. Yes, sir. You have a good one. Appreciate all you do. That was Secretary of State John Merrill chiming in. And I got to say, that was from the perspective of the inter- that that's one of the better interviews that I've ever done. And I'm not saying it's, you know, cause I'm such a great interviewer. I just ask normal questions. Uh, but it does highlight the fact that we seriously, seriously need to make some corrections, look into it because I think that both I and the American people understand and know that as much as we want our guy to win, It's most important that whoever actually won the election, whoever actually did wind up winning this thing, that they get it. But that's not the only thing. As important as that is, the only important thing is not whoever actually won the election takes office. That's obviously big. But what's also important is that the people believe that it was done fairly. Because if you have people that believe we have an illegitimate president sitting in the White House it is going to be significantly harder for that person to govern. It's going to be significantly harder for any Americans to trust their institutions and believe that their vote counts. And that's the last thing that we want. And so I really think Secretary of State John Merrill and other people that are honest arbiters, that are they're really just trying to make sure whoever's supposed to win the election won the election. I appreciate guys like him and the other Secretaries of State that I know that are out there working hard that are trying to do exactly the same thing. There may be some out there that have nefarious intentions, but hopefully we weed those people out, and I really hope we have an answer very, very shortly. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them. I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.